Welcome everyone to episode 56, the space show titled Oscillating Between Acceptance and Rejection. Decentralized digital currencies, financial and legal challenges. Today we delve into new relation between legislation and technology um, presented by Madame Xenia Chipek. She's a dame of honor and a head of tax risk analysis and the Ministry of Finance Tax Administration, Croatia. And we, the session also highlights today digital regulation developments in Europe with Mr. Antonio Lanot. Lanot. He is a charter tax advisor and senior editor, uh, auditor, international tax partner, Icon Consulting. And today's uh, show will be moderated by our team men member. Uh, she's a PhD candidate and the founder of CEO and founder and CEO at Trebelsi Legal Consultant and a brilliant technology transfer consultant. We are also in the second half of the uh, episode. We'll discuss. Uh, we dis discuss. Uh, um, Following questions, decades after the rise of the first digital currency in the world, how far did this disruptor went and what the future will hold for Bitcoin? We'll also discuss governments and the financial institution be able to regulate at some point the challenge caused by these disruptions. Uh, lastly, from Earth economic systems to space, uh, we learn how to create a sui generis economy in outer space using these decentralized digital currencies. So welcome to this episode and uh, you are invited to ask and comment questions uh, in the chat below. Without further ado, the mic is yours, Malak. Thank you so much, Hen. Um, well, I would, I would uh, add a few words few sentences. Actually, we are witnessing uh, a, a splash across news headlines about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies around their wild rides between highs and lows, volatility and unpredictability. Some people are skeptical, others are looking for high return on, on investments, while many are already riding the wave. Here comes regulators around the world taking efforts to conduct their function, the essential function of regulator, of a state. Regulator is the management of, or, or the essential, um, uh, um, um, the essential uh, function of a state is the management of public goods. And this is the, the, the idea under the public law notion. So between protecting the public interests, private interests, and search for a balance to contain the risks of these disruptors. And I say disruptors speaking about cryptocurrencies as it was um, called by, uh, by so many regulators before. So while benefiting of their positive output. So let's find what our esteemed guests, experts, insights about matters surrounding cryptocurrencies maybe blockchain, and uh, of course, related to their area of exp expertise. Well, I'm honored um, and happy today to welcome Lady Senya Chipek, Dame of Honor. She is a policymaker. Um, she works at the Ministry of Finance, Tax Administration, Croatia. She is highly respected and recognized international tax experts, uh, expert who was heavily involved in tax lawmaking in Croatia. Uh, and of course, I'm going to add something also that she is very active in, uh, in, in, in lawmaking uh, processes around uh, European Union. So as a project leader, Lady um, uh, Shipek established compliance risk analysis system and provided solutions for automatic VAT refine. She is currently involved as head of tax uh, risk analysis in future development of CRM system, especially in analysis of solutions for applying new technologies. She is also a lecturer at University in Law in Zagreb, a member of Government Blockchain Association US, author and book writer. 
Thank you so much for being here, Lady uh, Chipek, and the mic is yours. And really, uh, it's a great honor to have you here um, uh, as a policymaker, as an amazing uh, person you are in all what you do. Um, you're not only curious about technologies, but you are learning every day and we are learning from you also. And that's what great experts about, because actually many who are uh, they are uh, trying to hold on their knowledge and uh, looking at, at things in a way that uh, um, um, in stagnation uh, uh, way, they will not move forward. And actually we move forward with policymakers who understand the technology, who are there learning every day and uh, sharing their exp expertise with others while making the change needed for our global civilization. Thank you so much. And it's your, uh, um, the mic is yours. Thank you very much, uh, uh, dear uh, Malak. Uh, uh, I'm very happy that I'm here with you today. Uh, so it's really my privilege. Uh, so about the knowledge, I agree with you. Uh, so we have to educate ourselves every day. Um, I work in Ministry of Finance for so 25 years, but I educate myself every day. So. Uh, Yes, I'm connect, uh, the, the most of my career uh, was connecting uh, as, uh, with laws and lawmaking, but right now I connect with, uh, with legislation. So today's topics are very uh, interesting. It's something that is, um, I will say, hot topic and uh, most uh, uh, actual topic in the world right now. Uh, and. Um, and uh, actually, um, I would uh, emphasize some of uh, some of my uh, from my point of view. And uh, as you see on my first slide, it is one coin. This is EU tax coin. It is hypothetical 3D uh, 3D image of hypothetical coin. Uh, which uh, uh, I really research uh, because original concept and original idea is for the countries of GCC from Mr. Richard Ainsworth uh, for the VAT coin. So my idea is to research further and uh, try to use uh, this, of course, not real coin, uh, but uh, uh, but. Uh, we are in virtual world, so virtual coin for only for paying the taxes. Because of that, this coin is on the uh, on my first uh, slide. So uh, from my experience in my uh, 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 when, when I work uh, directly in the laws, so I was responsible for several tax reforms uh, for any kind of kind of taxes. Uh, so I concluded that uh, paradigm between legislation and technology is already shifted. So what's that mean? Uh, it was a rule that always technology followed the legislation, but is not acceptable anymore, fully acceptable. So legislation and technology must be compatible. So we see some uh, quite of some tensions between, for example, in European Union, GDPR uh, and uh, blockchain. So uh, where the legislation and technology are not compatible uh, could be a problem in uh, could be a problem in practice. So it's very important that in uh, legislation today are involved all stakeholders who can help. I, I mean, not only taxpayers, uh, uh, all the experts, ex uh, including the blockchain experts, IT experts, uh, of course, lawyers, economists and uh, uh, give the benefits uh, for the legislation. If we have good legislation, it will be very easy to apply this uh, legislation. Uh, so today is possible direct impact uh, of the technology on the legislation. So some sol te technological solution will be dictate uh, how the provision of the law would uh, look like. So this is something that is already uh, uh, is uh, uh, shifted. So if you look at it at the world challenge, so if you look, uh, for example, in the uh, uh, in the uh, OECD, um, for, for example, uh, uh, for the 
for the tax purposes, we have intangible assets uh, different uh, uh, from uh, goodwill. We have financial instruments, we have currencies, we have uh, commodities or virtual commodities. So we, we have a quite different definitions of the cryptocurrencies. Uh, taxation right now is usually uh, in accordance with, with national uh, legislation. So it's quite different, uh, difficult for the for the taxpayers and for the citizens uh, and for especially multinationals and businesses who are cross borders, how to in some countries we have regulation, in some countries we don't have regulations. Uh, the, the, the regulations are different. So is uh, whenever the legislation is too complex, we will have uh, a lot of uh, 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 citizens or uh, taxpayers uh, in the field of uh, non-compliance. So first, uh, I think that's my opinion that uh, international approach, we will see this on this uh, MICA proposals are really good way uh, to move forward. Uh, it will be nice that we have uh, 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 international or uh, uh, even better global solution for tax, uh, taxation of the cryptocurrencies, even in uh, definitions and way of taxation. Uh, so also international accountant standards uh, definitions, uh, definition we don't have cryptocurrencies. Uh, so uh, we have a problem, uh, anonymity versus privacy. So are the cryptocurrencies really uh, uh, have this uh, anonymity uh, benefit or or not so mostly the cryptocurrencies today are not anonymous uh, and uh, you need to identify yourselves if you are on some uh, virtual uh, market and uh, uh, but of course we have some uh, unregular markets so far but uh, anonymity is i will not say right now is benefit uh, for cryptocurrencies, privacy is something else. So we have to uh, we have to uh, really protect the privacy of every every person person in every market. So that that's not the question. But this is two different uh, things. Uh, so the need of regulation of the crypto uh, the cryptocurrency market is really something that we need. Uh, because uh, uh, I think is really necessary. And uh, another challenge is, of course, development of uh, CBDC or central banking digital currency. And of course, other challenge challenges that will be uh, show in crypto world right now. In the field, for example, of in the field of taxation, we have right now every day something new. So uh, hard forks or, or airdrops or um, many other things taking that we have to uh, uh, to deal with that. So we have to uh, uh, have some rules about that. So it's always challenge. So disruption, this is just some of the data. So from uh, one of the study of the European Parliamentary Research Service uh, is estimated that the value added crypto assets in the EU financial sector could reach uh, uh, 700 uh, billion euros with stable legislation, even 760 mil, uh, billion, excuse me, uh, 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 um, euros, and which is a really huge positive impact on uh, uh, economy primarily. So we see that uh, value added on crypto assets could be very high. And this is not something that we uh, we can say this that's not exist. Actually, it's existing uh, and we have to uh, have to be focused on that and uh, and follow follow this situation with the cryptocurrencies. So what are the dangers of unregulated markets? There is the no game rules. If you, in, in any sports, you will have the rule. If you don't have a rules, uh, you will, there is no guarantee or uh, protection uh, for, uh, for you or for anybody else. So if you are in some market, for example, the classic financial market, you can lose, of course, you can, you can, uh, get some benefits or you can lose, but you will lose on the price. But in this situation, you can lose everything and uh, no one uh, will protect you and say, uh, and uh, will protect your rights and uh, it will be very hard to, to get money back. 
uh, almost impossible. So uh, this is something that we need to regulate it. And I think that first thing is protection the, the all stakeholders on the market. And what is actually happening in uh, unregulated markets? Actually, we don't know. It could happen everything uh, from, uh, from some criminal activity to some benefits for somebody. Uh, of course, if anonymity is involved in that, could be, for example, some information that uh, you will have this information. I will not have. This is not, this is not right. So, uh, so actually happening, could happening a lot of things and consequences uh, could be uh, very, uh, very bad for the stakeholders. So especially investors, because there is no protection in uh, such kind of uh, markets. Uh, because of that, uh, I and I agree with Mika proposal. Uh, so uh, I think that is excellent comprehensive document uh, 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 by European Commission. And I fully agree with that. Even the people said as that regulation will be closed the door for the cryptocurrencies. I, uh, I think quite opposite, it will be open the door and we will know the rule of game. So uh, I think that this document is, uh, it's really something, uh, it's, it's really big document, but I think it's really necessary and gives legal certainty for cryptocurrencies not covered by existing EU regulations. So, if some of them is in existing EU regulation, it will be not covered with the MICA proposal. Um, so uniform rules at EU level for cryptocurrency related services providers and cryptocurrency issuers. It's very important also. Special rule for stable coins. So, so far there is no definition or this is the different definitions. It, it's quite worse. Uh, including cases where they function as e-money. So we have very nice DLT pilot regime is a part of this uh, um, proposal of regulation uh, because uh, it is a good way how to test uh, some of the technology. Uh, it is a little bit outside of the legal frame, but uh, they allow the stakeholders in the platform to test it and piloting in the DLT regime and for future regulation and future legislation, it is very important to get this, uh, uh, this uh, back, this information, is this something good or is this something bad or we should avoid something or we should put something in the law. So it will be very, very valuable information in this uh, DLT pilot regime. So this is one point from, uh, from this regulation, uh, which I would like to emphasize. The regulation adopted in the field of the cryptocurrency should be precise and uh, resistant to future, future changes. That's meant it, could, it has to be stable regulation. It's very important. And it should be possible to follow innovations and technological de developments. The terms cryptocurrency and decentralized transaction technology should therefore be defined as broadly as possible to cover, uh, cover all types of cryptocurrencies that are currently outside the scope of the union financial services rules. Such a regulation should also, also contribute to the goal of combating money laundering and terrorists. So I think that this kind of regulation we need. So why broadly, we don't know. And I said something about what we uh, see in the uh, field of taxation right now, the challenges that uh, we see in the field of cryptocurrencies. So the re uh, regulation uh, broadly is uh, very good because it is uh, in the future pretty unknown, but uh, the definition uh, should be clear and, uh, and all leg legislation should be uh, really uh, easy for applying. Uh, easy for applying is not easy to achieve in uh, uh, regulation, but I think this is a good step uh, forward with this MICA uh, proposals. So I really support that. Uh, central bank digital currencies versus stable, co stable coins and cryptocurrencies. So we have now 
uh, European Central Bank uh, pilot uh, regime for uh, digital uh, euro. So it will be takes 24 uh, months. But we see that many countries around the world uh, uh, really testing and analyzing uh, uh, analyze uh, the digital currencies. Uh, so uh, we cannot say this is something that will not be a future. May maybe not in this shape, but this is something that is really uh, right now in the focus around the world in many, many countries. Uh, so I will conclude when, uh, not if, is the main question of the new payments and the currency in the future. So it's a matter of time. Uh, so we see in the uh, in the past how the money actually changing, and uh, nothing is written in the stone. So new era, new digital era needs uh, new approaches, uh, new economy, and I think that will be uh, happening. So what will be stay and what will be vanish? Uh, that's the second main question. So some research said that with CBDC, actually the stable coins is something that is not necessary anymore. We have stable coins uh, in, in some situations. Uh, cryptocurrency, some research said that uh, uh, maybe the, uh, the the important cryptocurrencies as Bitcoin will stay. So that's something that is very open. So we are not, uh, we don't have magic wand to say what will be happening, but it's many, many research uh, for and against what will be uh, happening. So, but uh, we should conclude that many central banks in many uh, countries really research uh, um, uh, digital currency and digital fiat currency. So uh, we will see uh, what will be with the uh, cryptocurrencies. In my opinion is that, that cryptocurrencies will stay because uh, some of them, that's for sure, because I think so, uh, because uh, it's quite different than the fiat, uh, than the fiat money. Uh, so when I research that, I like the way that some of cryptocurrencies really uh, uh really will stay but not i was i will be glad that it is not unregulated that the people could be safe in uh, environment of the cryptocurrencies decentralization is something that is way forward i don't have any question uh, and any second doubt about that so of course challenges are legal and in institutional steps so uh, we are used to be uh, and work in a centralized way. So decentralization is something else, so quite different. But I think that uh, we are uh, slowly, slowly going that way. And if you look at, at the benefits of the blockchain and uh, new technologies as a DLT, then we see that decentralization has uh, really, uh, really good benefits. But if we look at that from the point of government, uh, then uh, it is not something that is uh, easy to achieve overnight, but is really possible. And if you look, for example, in the blockchain, blockchain has really benefits even for the tax system and tax administration. Uh, so why not use that if that will help tax authorities and also taxpayers. So decentralization is something that for me is way forward and legal and institutional steps will follow. Uh, and determined benefits, of course, we will not do anything if we don't have a benefits from, uh, from, this, uh, uh, from these uh, steps. So is the new space era begun? I, I don't mean uh, the space era when the people are uh, went to uh, uh, when the people went to the moon. So we see recently fights in the space. So can we talk about space economy? Yes. So why not? So we have quite new situations. So someone just pay and go to space. So uh, till. Recently, you have to be astronaut to do that. So we, as I said before, and many months before, that we actually expect new economy, and new economy will follow new monetary and new tech system. 
it's actually already here. And if we read uh, between the lines, uh, everything is going that way. So I cannot be 100% sure, but actually it's very exciting times. So why not? So people we will not people will not stay in the caves forever. So it's our progress, but uh, we have to be very sure to use benefits from there. So everything what is good in that, we have to be preparing and we have to use that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam um, Chipek. It's a, it's a great presentation. And uh, as usual, we learn from you every time I follow a presentation for you with um, the great insights you give us. And uh, yes, predictability, it's important. Risk assessment is important. Risk management is even more important for policymaker. And of course, the well-being of, uh, of, uh, of everyone. And uh, of course, by reducing the, the, the issues that we are seeing in terms of uh, use of cryptocurrency and um, uh, the, in, the, in this uh, digitalization er era, the use of cryptocurrency to make um, uh, crime act, uh, 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 acts. And before I remember I had a, a, a research uh, regarding the, the, the dark net and how the dark net was in term of law and how we can combat uh, crimes going on in the in the dark net into uh, the way that that we are combating crimes uh, here in the real life and uh, actually crypto uh, currencies were the main um, let's say incentives for these criminal acts to to, 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 to be done it's uh, it's they were paid through through that thing and today we see that cryptocurrency is everywhere. So how can we mitigate the risk and manage the risk of those criminal act, acts that they are going on? Tax evasion, it's very, very important that uh, our next guest, um, uh, esteemed guest, uh, we are honored to have him here. Uh, Mr. Antonio uh, Lanotti is going to speak to us more about uh, about the, 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 this uh, um this um, subjects in term of taxation. Taxation is very, very important. And I was very, very surprised from someone uh, before uh, invited me to have a keynote speak as, uh, and, and speech. And he was asking me, uh, well, we want, uh, he said, uh, why, why you want taxation on uh, digital currency? And I'm like, or on, on, on cryptocurrency. And I'm like, you know, it's taxation is very, very important because actually if you don't pay tax and you try to evade taxation, you will be fallen under a, a criminal uh, procedure. So uh, I am so happy to learn more and to um, uh, dive uh, into that into the taxation and cryptocurrency with Mr. Uh, Lanot. Uh, he is um, Chartered Tax Advisor and Senior Auditor, uh, International Tax Partner at Icon Consulting. Um, he is uh, particularly keen on digital transformation, blockchain, and uh, artificial intelligence applications such as IoT, machine learning, and so on. So, um, and also he is uh, a, a, a a person that I personally learned from uh, when he is talking about circular economy, green tech, with important contributions on IF, um, IBFD European taxation, international tax review, international financial law review, Harvard Business Review, um, El Sol uh, 24, Ore, uh, Wall Street Italia, Bulletino uh, Tributario, so he is um, also uh, well known to be results driven finance control and, and international taxation um, expert with years of experience in industries and, um, he, and consultant in Italy and abroad. Uh, since October, 2019, he has been an active member in the tax technology committee, CFE Bruxelles, Brussels, and also uh, a member of the organization of climate circular economy, uh, OCCE uh, Bruxelles with an important contribution to the Climate Bank Roadmap 2021-2025. I would love to, uh, um, uh, to, to have you in the show with him one more time to speak to us about this because it's important uh, initiative, which is finance, uh, financed by the European Investment Bank. He is also a member of Opera for Peace, which aims to launch and spread circular culture value. Recently, he has been appointed member delegate of Pavados Global Opinion Leader Research Panel. Um, 
the world uh, so so uh, the, the the world is uh, like we have uh, we have guests uh, watching the show from all over the world and we would love to hear your um, your insights and share with us um, your expertise uh, within this short time of uh, of, of slot to speak and uh, then after that we will share with uh, with you the audience questions and we move to the q and a um, uh, session. So the floor is yours and thank you so much. It's an honor also to have you here and uh, thank you for all you do uh, within your area of, uh, of, of, uh, of knowledge and uh, it's yours. The mic well, is yours. First of all, thank you for the actual the brilliant presentation. It's actually a privilege and honor for me to be actually among these three beautiful and competent actually women. So it's a, it's a kind of actually I'm, I'm really grateful to be all, all, all still there in this kind of uh, webinar. And that's why I actually look forward for, you know, an important and very productive uh, webinar. Uh, so first of all, please let me thank actually Madame Ksenia for the wonderful presentation actually she gave to us. It's always good actually to, you know, to learn some, 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 some other, you know, important topics in terms of uh, cryptocurrencies and, uh, and regulation, of course. So uh, I'll, uh, first of all, I'll share my screen and present actually a presentation I'll prepare for you, which is actually, yeah, sorry. Yeah, start with this. Uh, it's, uh, you know, as a, you know, my, my English teacher used to, 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 to teach me actually at the time, I'll keep, I'll keep it singular and simple. So I know that you, you know, be on time in, in a way. So, so we, we're talking about, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, we started actually our presentation you know, by, you know, uh, quoting, Bergmeister Fuller, who used to be actually an architect and scientist, American scientist, who used to say that actually you never change things by fighting existing reality. In order to change something, you need to be a new model, which is actually the cryptocurrency or the digital transformation we actually figure out actually we, we, we're actually facing going on at the moment. So that makes actually the existing one, the existing system obsolete. And that's actually what we actually figure out actually in the moment, at the moment about digital transformation. So uh, in terms of table contents about my presentation, it's important actually to stress out the importance of digital transformation. There's of course a digital over strategy in Europe in terms of uh, which is, was actually highlighted by uh, Madame Ksenia about Mika, market for capital assets and digital Europe. And actually it's important because last week the uh, European Central Bank announced actually a 24 months uh, investigation phase on how to introduce digital euro in terms of uh, design and also distribution and implementation of digital euro. Then we have Central Bank digital currency. And then of course the cyber risks in terms of blockchain and, and artificial intelligence. And of course, uh, uh, a section for conclusion. So, uh, First of all, one of the most important takeaways from this extraordinary uh, emergency period, which is actually the pandemic would be infected, is the importance of digital transformation. And for sure, we can say actually there's no kind of going back. We need to live in, an, in, a, in a different way. So the digital world is even changing and evolving, and it actually is up to us to change with it. We need to, to get used to physical distancing without losing social connections. So that's why it's very important to facilitate this kind of important disruptive technologies such as blockchain and artificial intelligence. It's important to actually to stress out uh, the, the kind of concept of the meaning of digital technology, which is actually the integration of uh, technology to the business. And so what is going to change is actually, you know, the, the kind of communication is going to change is already changing actually. And also the kind of value, the creation of the value and the way actually it is being addressed to the customers. But beyond that, it's important that actually the digital transformation itself is actually a cultural change. And it's important because it requires actually all the organization affected to be comfortable with failures and also to kind of you know, keep distance from a kind of traditional way of making business and profits. And try to integrate actually the digital transformation within their business. So that's why it's important actually to get familiar with some you know, important terminologies in terms of digital transformation. One is blockchain, of course. 
And blockchain is a form of distributed ledger. It's a software actually, in which transactions are conducted in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. So actually that the transaction are kind of broadcast in term to, 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 to the entire system of participants. But just a few persons, which are called miners, are going to actually to validate those information within the, the, the block of, within the system of blocks, which is called blockchain. And so this kind of message is going to be propagated actually within the, the, the system. Uh, the blockchain is a part of DLT, which is more centralized compared to actually the blockchain, which is per nature actually kind of the centralized technology. And then we need to get familiar with smart contract. Smart contract is actually a translation, transposition actually, or set of instructions of uh, at that, at a kind of underneath Will, which is mainly actually written contract, contract, where actually the smart contract is actually the kind of transformation digital instructions of uh, you know original originate will from, from between counterparts. So everything is already stated, and what the smart contract does is actually to transform in digital instructions within the blockchain actually what the, 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 the will from the counterpart was. Uh, it's also important to get familiar with uh, terminology like Mika, which is the market for capital assets, and we see this later, central bank digital currency, the FinTech, which is the technology adopted for finance, and the, the, the decentralized finance. It's important because, uh, as, as I said, actually already, uh, there's uh, an important, actually, you know, uh, commitment from the European Central Bank, which uh, last week on the 14th of July actually announced that there is an investigation phase in terms of digital euro, which is going to be started actually within a few months. Uh, yeah, most most likely in January 2022, and uh, 22, yeah, sorry. And uh, as well as the Mika, which is going to we're going to see actually later, is actually a proposal from the, the, the European Commission dated September 2020, but which is going to be for sure is going to be actually adopted by 2022, because the, the, this kind of timing issues there where all the, the member states need to actually to ratify this kind of uh, proposal uh, within actually the Parliament, European Parliament first and then to the member states afterwards. So um, what, what is the centralized finance? The centralized finance is actually the, the, the technology uh, used to, within the, the finance where it, it doesn't rely on kind of, you know, the, the so-called middleman, so like uh, exchange or banks, or because it actually works, it relies on blockchain technology. And mainly this kind of blockchain technology is actually uh, form made by a smart contract. So it's important because all the, 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 the participants within actually the, the DeFi platform are actually yeah, used to lend and borrow money within the, 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 the whole system. So as I mentioned earlier, the Mika, the market for crypto assets is actually a proposal from the commission dated 20, 24 September, 2020. And the Mika outlines, uh, outline, outlines actually four main tasks. So the, the commitments there is to legalize the crypto assets and have you know, all the European financial services being covered. We, we need to, 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 to focus on the fact that actually Mika is just at the moment a proposal. We have already a directive which is called MIFID for financial services outside actually Mika. What Mika is not covering at the moment, neither actually MIFID is uh, the, the, the new uh, important actual concept on the NFT, which is not fungible tokens, and that probably going to be covered by you know the, the incoming decade, which is uh, you know the 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 the, the, the commission I'm, I'm delightfully member of. Is actually we actually wrote uh, already uh, an opinion statement to the European Commission in terms of uh, you know NFTs and uh, digital currency in this way. So as I said, uh, the Mika is actually outlining uh, you know these four main tasks like legalizing crypto assets, provide equal rules for virtual asset service providers, 
change and kind of harmonize actually all the current uh, rules, government rules within the member states. And of course, give guarantee some special laws for suburb province. Uh, we have already some examples of, of course, of, uh, you know, some pieces within Europe of, uh, you know, kind of advanced regulations. One, one of them is uh, the, 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 the French one, which is called Pacte. And Pacte is actually a kind of frame, legal framework for tokens, which actually cannot assimilate to financial instruments, because as I said, for financial instruments in Europe, there's MIFID already in place. And also Italy, surprisingly, actually, Italy is far advanced, actually, in terms of, uh, you know, the LTA and smart contract, because with the law 12 uh, for February, of February 2018, we already actually uh, indicate some kind of uh, meaning definition of uh, digital ledger technologies, as well as smart contract. Um, uh, before actually you know, coming to the, this kind of investigation phase in terms of uh, digital euros, it's important that actually there's a kind of a joint statement between the European Central Bank and the European Commission. So as I was actually yeah, mentioned earlier, there was first of all, before the announcement from the European Central Bank, which is actually was actually last week, uh, there was a public consultation before and, and this kind of public consultation actually indicate the kind of perimeter in a way actually on which the, 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 the digital euro is going to perhaps actually presumably look like. Um, but even before that, uh, in December 2020, that there's, a, there's a, an important declaration in Berlin, which was stated actually a kind of European Union digital society uh, transformation. This is an important actual milestone in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, commitment and actual declaration. And the main commitments of this, this kind of digital society declaration, the Berlin declaration is uh, to promote fundamental rights and democratic values within the digital economy, uh, enhance social participation and inclusion because it's very important, foster digital empowerment, digital literacy within the European community, uh, strength, of course, trust. And it's important actually to see that, of course, there are some kind of risks, cyber risks actually within blockchain and artificial intelligence. But it is also important to stress the fact that actually there are lots of important opportunities in terms of financial transactions, but also taxations. Uh, create value basis and foster resilience and sustainability. This is very important because actually after the, the pandemic event, it's important to be resilient. And uh, the next generation of you is actually one of the main, you know, important actually step towards resilience in, in Europe. And it's important also because last week, the European Commission actually presented the, the, the European Sustainability actually plan, the Green New Deal, which is also important because the two of them, the two directives, the important directive is that actually the digital transformation in Europe, but also the European Green Deal. The two of them actually are going to match together because they, they, can, allow, they, they can be actually taken you know, alongside in terms of you know, future development of the European community. Uh, first of all, as actually, yeah, Madame Ksenia was actually mentioned, uh, there's a, a very important vibrating system within central bank digital accounts. It's important because they, there was a survey from the Bank for International Settlement located in Geneva, in Switzerland, and. Uh, which says actually that indicated that 86% of central banks are actually looking into central bank digital currency. And most important, actually 60% of them are actually you know, experimenting this kind of digital currency with kind of proof of, proof of concept actually projects. Um, so, um, as I was mentioned earlier, there are some kind of, uh, you know, important you know, risks to take in consideration in terms of cyber security for blockchain. But it's also important that actually you need to get used to the fact that actually you, you perhaps actually you need to, to, to know better and, and deeper actually the, 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 the way actually blockchain works. 
first of all, blockchain, the pure by nature is actually decentralized. That means actually everyone is actually holding a piece of information. It creates trust because uh, everyone is actually get a copy of uh, you know of the, the the block of the blockchain. That means that actually once you need to kind of attack the, the blockchain as a whole, what you need to do is actually to corrupt all the copies in circulation, which is almost impossible. And also, whenever actually there is a kind of cyber attacks in terms of to the blockchain, it's uh, you know it's actually kind of real time feasible, which can actually be prevented in a way. Uh, to conclude, actually, my presentation, it's important actually to like the fact that for, for sure, uh, and I, um, I'm actually, I convene to what actually Madame Senia was uh, indicating earlier, that the Mika is an important milestone in terms of, you know, regulation for the, for the, the, the next digital economy in terms of di digital currencies, as well as cryptocurrency. But it's also important actually to regulate uh, also the, 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 the kind of fraud uh, that might most likely actually going to happen. So it's important actually to, uh, you know, put in place also important tax due diligence uh, in terms of uh, anti-money laundering actually uh, indications. So it's, it's important actually to along with the, the, the digital transformation, with the technologies, but it's, it's also actually important to put the, the core legal and taxation framework within the, the, the European community. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Uh, Lanot. It's uh, it's an amazing also uh, presentation with the uh, with the much technical uh, aspects to it because actually uh, still people. Um, um, and, and I met people, they did not know how it works. They did not know how to invest if they wanted to invest. They did not know what, they got scammed so much, so many from these uh, um, online selling services and they put their money into something. They did not do the proper due diligence regarding that. And all this, it's, uh, th there's a lot of, uh, of awareness from our side that needed to, uh, uh, to give uh, to these people and to the public in order to understand and what is at stake, even startups, they get into uh, and so on, they do not know how to have the proper governance. Um, and, and we've seen even big, big uh, exchange uh, companies, um, they had issues, uh, for example, they got uh, penalties in, in Thailand, this, uh, uh, there's one big uh, company, I, I forget exactly the name, or maybe I don't want to say, anyway, so they are, uh, they, 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 they get hit by penalties, that's not right, because they direct their business into jurisdiction that it is uh, against the law to uh, to do that. And here, Madame Senija, maybe you can tell me as 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 a person from the policymaker uh, um, uh, seat and hat uh, that you are, uh, how can um, can can uh, um, the government or the authority? Uh, regulate at the end of the day we have a lot of initiatives and everything but how can we get them to uh, submit at the end of the day to what is right and what is wrong because we are in a society we are in a country and each person signs uh, 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 or, or we know very well how we are living in a society we sign our uh, social contract and we need to fulfill to that social contract not to harm others and not to risk uh, to get people risk their their uh, um, houses they sell their houses they some people sold their houses to put it in bitcoin because they were lured by the return on investment and here from your point of view like um away from all these initiatives what do you think it, it, it how how can regulator uh, really get these people to uh, uh, to go by the rules so, and, uh, uh, it's actually excellent question and i i will say that as i always said if uh, First of all, we need some kind of regulation for all participants on the market. So, but what uh, this regulation looks like, we have to trust each other. We have authority on the other side, and we have the sorry, investors on the other side in the, if we are talking in general, but in cryptocurrency world also. So 
This regulation has to be simple, has to be clear, has to be structured, and has to be, if we are talking about taxation, it has to be very simple to apply. So, for example, we have today in many countries, in some countries not, in some countries is different, as in Italy's currency, but in most countries, uh, for example, uh, is treated like a capital gain. If we take something as a capital gain, it's pretty uh, complex. It, it's not easy way of taxation. But if we put that in some, in some regulation, with some normal tax rate, we will have much more people who will be compliant with the tax law. And as I said, some international approach uh, will be much better. So the game will be the same in the many countries, for example, in European Union or in GCC, or it will be, it will be much easier. So this uh, mutual trust and easy, um, easy apl applicable law with uh, less administrative burden, with less tax burden, if we can afford that. But I think we can. It will be something that people uh, could easy fulfill and uh, uh, fulfill their obligation, tax obligation, and will be compatible with the law and in the field of compliance. That's my point of view. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam uh, Sinija. And um, uh, the, the, I, I think the other uh, questions that we uh, shared uh, everywhere on the social media were covered uh, uh, in the presentation. And uh, that was the latest one that I would I would I wanted to uh, share with the with the audience and hear from uh, from a policymaker. And thank you so much for your uh, answer. And uh, and as long as they continue that way, I think the policymaker and uh, and uh, and the, the, the authority. Um, they will continue with the penalties and the penalties are out for these companies until they give up or they, they, they will uh, submit to what is right and what is wrong. And at the end of the day, we're not people that we are, you know, at the end of the day, we are a, 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 like I am in the legal field, you are a policymaker. Mr. Antonio is, uh, is also in the uh, legal field and shaping, uh, uh, shaping also the, 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 the policies in uh, somehow from the initiative he is involved in. So the thing is, like, we need to, to, to say we're not against, uh, uh, you know, this destruction. We are not against, uh, or, or I'm speaking on, on behalf of, of everyone, we are for, uh, let's say, uh, risk management and for uh, what is, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, human rights is important also because actually uh, crypto mining is, uh, is, is a problem in, uh, from environmental perspective. And uh, it could be a problem also from human rights perspective because if people, they are selling their properties in order to put their money and invest into very, very volatile, high risk uh, investment, and it's, uh, it's, it's a problem. And there's a problem with the society at, at, at the end of the day, which is will have a, a repercussion on the social development that we are all trying to seek. So uh, thank you so much for your, um, your answers. And I will pass to uh, Hen to share um, um, the audience questions. And she has more questions for you. And I'm here if there is anything I can come back. Maybe to talk if we have time about the space economy and, and cryptocurrency. Thank you, Malak. As a, a social impact entrepreneur, I'd love to hear what are the societal risks and benefits shifting our current financial system to an all digital currency system. Perhaps that's for, do you wanna start, Senya? Uh, yes, actually, uh... It is, a, it is a really good question. The benefit we see, for example, we saw, for example, uh, now in the global pandemic in the many countries, the government help entrepreneurs. So we uh, saw in the United States uh, how much of it, it was a trillion dollars who are in, actually uh, released in uh, helping economy. And uh, how to it, it that that is not a problem, but the but the problem is how to distribute that money. So how the, the people get this money on time? So in this uh, in this situation, uh, uh, the 
CBDC without intermediaries, for example, could be a good example uh, for, some, for some kind of benefit. So we have a situation, as I remember, that UNICEF uh, distributed some uh, tokens uh, for helping also some economies uh, uh, and uh, uh, in, uh, especially children. So there is the benefit. Uh, so the cost for the commercial bank that, that, that will be free account or a very lost uh, cost of accounts. And uh, maybe it's more important uh, access, um, access to, to money. So I think that that is the most uh, benefits of the CBDC and the uh, new digital money, fiat money. Thank you, Madame Senia. Would you like to add on, Antonio? Oh, yes, uh, particularly I feel like I um, share the view of uh, Madame Senia. Um, let me say that actually that, you know, that the future is that um, in terms of, uh, you know, digital currency and cryptocurrency also. And it's important actually to do, differentiate the, the, the two, uh, we're saying actually that, you know, the central bank digital currency uh, in a way actually be intended like public money while uh, uh, the cryptocurrency actually the region of cryptocurrency is actually private so uh we we, we don't of course we, we don't know what we're going to what we're adding to but what we do know is the fact that actually the apart from the the, the digital currency and the cryptocurrency actually what it's important is actually the technology behind it which is blockchain and blockchain, as actually Ms. Madame Xenia was uh, indicating, it's important, it's very important because it connects the actual points in a way, and it gives actually a kind of new system of uh, you know circulation and communication. And uh, that's why we, we actually should not um, underestimate the, the, the power of uh, you know the, uh, the centralized technology like blockchain or even artificial intelligence actually in, within the future. I agree on the fact that, uh, you know, uh, at the moment in terms of uh, taxation, but also in terms of legal system, um, the cryptocurrency world is actually a complete mess in Europe, but not just in Europe, actually, to be honest. And that's why, uh, and that's why actually they, 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 they put in actually some fines, some penalties. And the reason why they actually they indicate that they put in some fines and some penalties is because actually they, at the moment, actually, it's kind of a early stage at the moment, so they actually don't know what the phenomenon is going to be and what it's going to be to, to look like actually in the future. But the future we see now, and actually, I'm sure Madam Senior will share my view, is that you know, in terms of the regulation, Mika will give a kind of harmonized and new standardized actually set of regulation within Europe. But also, in addition to that, what we need to have is a kind of set of instructions in terms of taxation in order to harmonize our all the system within Europe. And that would be a kind of responsibility from the OECD, C, o, C, D, A, sorry. And uh, because it's important actually from them to give some kind of input in terms of directive. That's why I'm stressing out the fact that, you know, the next thing coming actually directive will be actually decade. And the decade, we actually give uh, hopefully a kind of set of instructions in terms of you know taxation and regulation within the European community. So, thank you, Mr. Antonio. While Bitcoin is decentralized and a rational strategy to preserve your per personal financial freedom and opt out of the existing central bank uh, controlled system, the central bank digital currency will be centralized and completely controlled by the central banks? And uh, will, will we have smart contracts that allow the banks to survey and control our lives? And if so, who will own all the items that we, the public rent? Who wants to take this one? So for me, that's a very good question. What will be the role of commercial bank in the future? So. As you said, uh, I think that, uh, yes, uh, uh, cryptocurrencies are decentralized, decentralized but uh, 
cryptocurrencies are different from fiat currencies in digital shape or in uh, or in or in real coins that or banknotes that that's not uh, that's the same. So cryptocurrencies is an another world, and I think today that uh, banks uh, uh, in the situation of CBDC, uh, I'm not sure that this this is the benefit, this direct connection without intermediaries between central bank and the payments and, and me, for example. But uh, is that mean that uh, commercial bank will uh, lose all the roles uh, in, uh, in monetary system? I'm not so sure. So I, I'm, I'm not sure that central banks will, will uh, have, uh, I will say, infrastructures to, uh, to, to get all the all the tasks from commercial banks. So I think that all stakeholders will be in game, uh, but uh, the question is how and how much benefits we will get from that. But cryptocurrency, as you said, and decentralization, I think that's the, the decentralization is the way, but in the field of cryptocurrencies, of course, there is not central control, but with the regulation, there is some kind of control. So, and I support that. So, I think that, as uh, Ms. Malak, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Malak said, uh, there is there is really a lot of risks uh, for every citizen who invests in the cri cryptocurrencies. So, the, all stakeholders are very important here. Uh, but CBDC is uh, something that will show us. How the role will be uh, will be put in the in the in in the practice. So I'm I'm really I'm I'm really happy to see that. So I think it will be really great to see the role of every of us. But actually, there are benefits. That's that's something that that uh, many countries testing. So I I believe in that. Thank you. From Earth economic systems to space, how to create a so generous economy in outer space using this decentralized digital currencies? A futuristic one, Malak. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, uh, like simplify the question. Actually, it's, uh, it's futuristic and not futuristic because actually some companies and uh, JP Morgan, they tried uh, blockchain based uh, on satellite communications. So they do satellites over there and they tried it. And, and there's a, they, there are some issues related to that, as they say, is uh, the memory within the satellite itself, how to keep it, uh, the, 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 the information. But it is the future and some companies, they work on it. So, the, so this one is the interplay between space and blockchain. Uh, now, uh, the, the futuristic question is, how can we use cryptocurrency or is it feasible to use cryptocurrency since it's not physical? for um, us when we are functioning full economy in space? So this one is the future, a uh, futuristic question. I agree with that question and I think it's possible. So I put uh, some, of, some of one sentence on my slide. So I think you are very right. So we will start with the technology by the end will be a con new economy and new monetary system. And I think that you are really on the good trace. So I, I call it space economy, but I think that that's real future. So I see that uh, cryptocurrency and of course, digital money. Um, um, I agree, actually, I share your view. And um, there's a, a news actually from uh, some days ago about a company which is called B2. And who actually, which uh, launched uh, successfully is a uh, you know, digital security infrastructure uh, by using actually SpaceX Falcon 9. And uh, what is, uh, I'm telling you is that the fact that actually this kind of special company has, uh, is a uh, uh, new, actually important f first cryptocurrency exchange in the space. That will lead perhaps actually to the fact that probably actually even Elon Musk and, um, and Amazon, of course, they experiment in this kind of launch to the space and perhaps actually they will use 
uh, the, 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 the SpaceX actually to, you know, perhaps install some kind of bridges within the space in order to kind of uh, have a distributed ledger economy within, within the space also. And that would be, in, in my view, that would be actually the next, uh, the next step actually. So it's, it's a kind of you know, actually a space economy in a way. So yeah, Thank I agree. You. Thank you, Mr. Antonio. There's one more question from the audience. The cryptocurrency have witnessed significant growth and widespread adoption in the past six months. Will China ban on cryptocurrency affect its growth? Um, yeah, China already actually banned uh, the, the mining of cryptocurrency. But uh, well, first of all, it's important actually to say that, you know, that there's a kind of misconception about the, the fact that actually that it, the carbon is being used actually to mine uh, cryptocurrency. It's not actually, it's the opposite. It's not true. Um, there are some studies actually indicating that, you know, almost 55, from 55 to 65% of the, of the energy actually being used to, to, to mine actually cryptocurrency actually uh, bring uh, uh, solar energy instead of uh, carbon. But it's important actually also to stress the fact that even if China actually banned the, 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 the mining of the crucial currency, they, uh, I've, I've actually read and um, that are of course some kind of uh, important actually information from some important authority, authority actually sources, which actually indicated me the fact that actually they're probably going to move to Mongolia in order to keep on mining actually the, 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 the currency. So, which is not far away actually from China. So uh, if someone actually wants to invest in crypto, my, my personal suggestion is actually to keep on doing this, so. Thank you. Would you like to add on, uh, Madame Senya? I will agree with Antonio. So I think that Antonio uh, gave the great point. And actually the business is, any business is always find a way how to do that. It's, it's very hard to, to stop something. So of course we can. And uh, Ms. Malak said very well, it is security protection and something like that. Be very cautious to have anti-money laundering uh, regulation and something like that. But actually stopped something and we will see, but it's not so easy. And actually, uh, right now, we, every one of us can trading uh, on the market. So it is not completely stop. But yes, it will be impact, that, that's for sure. But uh, how big that we will see. And so I agree with Antonio fully. Uh, thank you, Madam Xenia. Just to, to, you know, it's important actually to say that the fact that at the moment the valuation that, that the kind of circulation of Bitcoin at the moment is, is about seven hundred billion dollars, which is a lot of money. <laughs> Don't know how much. Yeah, are, very true. It's, it's, it's a lot of money, and if you actually it, it, it put actually all together all the digital currency, the cryptocurrency at the moment, we're talking about one point six tri trillion of dollars which is too big actually to ignore in a way. So, um, you know, it's a big, Bitcoin is actually is pure technology. It's the technology behind which actually makes the difference. So, and uh, it's been actually, it's, it, from the its foundation, which was 2009, 2009, so it's been actually more than 11 years, actually more than, uh, than 12 years now. Actually, it's going, in my opinion, it's actually is going even farther in a way, because as you know, uh, there's a maximum cap of Bitcoin, which is 21 million. And the moment we are 18.7, something like that. So it's going to, and uh, I've read also that, you know, that the, the maximum supply is going to be reached by 2015, 50. And um, so, um, and once that actually, you know, is going to be the new digital gold, because once actually the maximum supply will be reached, that there's going to be lots of requests, which will be actually, will make actually the price even higher. So that's yes, the, that was, the, the 
that was my point. So it's we have the circulation of the Bitcoin uh, of the cryptocurrencies, not only the Bitcoin around us. So activity will be going on. Uh, and uh, as you said, uh, the market cap is not something that we can say it's it's something it's something little. Anyway, uh, with this Mika proposal uh, by the European Commission, uh, actually we see that uh, I will say uh, that the crypto market uh, is uh, crypto asset market is recognized. Uh, 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 parallel with the traditional financial market. So, so is, is, is something that you will not do doing for something which is not, which is not important. So uh, as uh, Ms. Malak said, uh, of course, we have to be sure what, what is happening in this era. So I put in the slide what, what is really could happen in unregular market, but we will see, but this is not something that is a, a, a little value about the volatility. Of course, you can tweet something and you will have dog, dog, dog going, I don't know, to the moon. So, but sometimes, sometimes seems similar to the financial markets. So Absolutely. if you put <laughs> some information, uh, then, then you will have the shares, which will be very valuable. So, so so I think that for now we'll stay. So absolutely, my... it's it's important because it's too big to ignore actually the phenomenon. And but, but it's fair to say that actually, that, you know, yes. what what we have at the moment is perhaps one more than 150 digital currency, cryptocurrency in circulation, and perhaps most of them actually will die because the 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 the, the projects behind them actually they're not very valid. But for sure, actually, the, the, the most important one, like um, uh, Bitcoin, of course, Ethereum, which is based on the decentralized blockchain on smart contract, and Dogecoin or Tripa or whatever. So the, the, the most important one, actually, because or even Cardano, Ada from Switzerland, I mean, they have very solid, uh, important, actually, project behind them. And that's why actually they're going to last, uh, you know, for, for, for further years, for, for sure. So, but, but most of them actually, they will die because in some cases actually they have not even very crystal clear actually project behind it. So. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Senior and Mr. Antonio and uh, Malak for this insight episode we could go on and on perhaps for a part two series on this topic with that i would like to close this uh, show with a quote provided by malak this is a quote from my uh, mentor mr peter diamandis at its core bitcoin is a smart currency designed by very forward-thinking engineers it eliminates the need for banks gets rid of credit card fees, current, currency exchange fees, money transfer fees, and reduces the need for lawyers in transitions. All good things for business people who wouldn't want to be in <laughs> Peter Diamandis. So thank you once again. And um, I would like to also announce the next episode. This is dedicated for our space for the future, the space for kids, space for youth, which we have only recently started a couple of months ago. The theme is how to do science in an analog mission. How would your kid feel if he or she went astronaut on Mars for a day or two or three? Will they enjoy the sights, suffer in isolation, be an avid scientist? What will excite them? So thank you uh, so much for your participation and we'll hope it served you. These uh, uh, speakers are their personal opinions. So the, this is not a legal advice or financial advice in any sorts of form. Please also um, uh, be mindful, you know, um, to follow up with our speakers. Um, no offerings, please. Thank you. <laughs> Unsolicited bitcoins. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you.